Yeah. All right, we're going to call to order the regular meeting, Bell Vernon area, March 27th meeting. Let's did you pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Director Callaway Rodriguez. Record Director Callaway Rodriguez here. Director Gross here. Director Habel here. Director Horhai here. Director Jurzak here. Director Nemec here. Director Wyko here. Director Quinn here. Director Livingwood here. Nine present. All right, Director or <laughs> Dr. Williams can take over from here. Absolutely. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, like Director Harhai had mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, our apologies for a late start. Um, <clears throat> tonight, we do have some recognition and a presentation. Uh, what I would like to do is call upon Mrs. King to assist with student recognitions. The envelopes, please. I apologize ahead of time if I mispronounce any names. Um, what I'd like to do is recognize uh, students from Ross Draver Elementary. Uh, Ross Draver students, just raise your hand for a second. Okay, good. We have them here tonight. Okay. There was a little miscommunication. We were prepared last week, but we have you now. Um, as I state your name, students, would you please stand up and come to the front of the room uh, to greet Mrs. King? Uh, very first person, Bentley. Bentley, can you... First of all, Bentley, I'm digging the hair. <laughs> Second of all, Bentley, could you pronounce your last name for me? Cagnon? Okay, I wanted to make sure that I said it right. Why don't you turn around and look at everybody, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, this is Bentley Cagnon. He's a kindergarten student with Miss Galoni. And the reason why Bentley was nominated is because of this. You can always count on Bentley to make you smile, case in point. He is quick to offer an encouraging word to anyone in need. Each morning, Bentley enters the classroom with a positive attitude and ready to help those who are in need. Ladies and gentlemen, Bentley Cagnon. <laughs> Do we also have first grader Sadie O'Wade? Sadie, come on up front. I'm loving the sweatshirt. Bentley, stay up front, buddy. We'll get a big group photo. All the moms and dads want to see that. Okay? So, folks, this is Sadie O. Wade. She's a first grader in Mrs. Cruzen's uh, class. And Sadie is always kind. Please note the sweatshirt. And helpful to both her classmates and her teacher. It shows in both words and actions daily. Ladies and gentlemen, Sadie O. Wade. <laughs> is Gino... Is it Spoto or Spoto? Spoto, long O. Gino is not shy, okay? Gino Spoto is a second grade student in Mrs. Bertram's class. Gino's caring personality is contagious. He questions a person's well-being when he sees someone who is in need or hurt, someone who is in a wheelchair or in his presence. He is very giving and puts a smile on many faces throughout the day, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gino Spoto. Gianna Vaccaro. Gianna, are you here? Come on up, kiddo. Gianna is in fourth grade, and the comments are shared collectively by fourth grade teachers. Gianna is always ready to help and assist both teachers and her classmates, and she does it with such a quiet, humble approach. She lives every day by choosing to be kind. Ladies and gentlemen, Gianna Vaccaro. And only because you're the big kid in RES, sixth grader Ava Klein. Ava, these comments are also made by, collectively by sixth grade teachers. Ava goes above and beyond to help students in homeroom stay organized, complete assignments, and study for tests. She gives her time to make sure that these students have a chance to succeed. No one has ever asked her to do this, 
She has always taken it upon herself to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, Ava Klein. So these are the Ross Draver rock stars for the month of February. Uh, parents, get your pictures quick. We can also stage one for later if need be. Is the paparazzi done? Okay, you students may have a seat. Thank you very much. Uh, we now have Mrs. King middle school recognition, correct? Okay. Um, William Din. Come on up, William. <laughs> William is the son of Lezu Lu. William participates in Taekwondo, student council, and yearbook. Uh, Pope Francis is actually the most influential person in William's life right now. Teachers say about William that he is always extremely responsible by completing all of his homework, making up any missed assignments, and being proactive in making sure he gets any work ahead of time if he knows he will be absent. He also seeks help when needed. William often exemplifies the characteristic of courage in and out of class by always volunteering and stepping up to any challenge or project and working through it towards completion or understanding. He is very outgoing a quality that Mrs. King and I know very well, right, William? He is very outgoing, friendly, and positive, and portrays courage in all of his school activities by simply trying and making a good attempt. William has courage to stand up and be heard no matter the situation, and will stand up and have a voice for what is right. William's, William always shows the courage to ask questions in class, and he continually tries to be a better student. Those were comments that were shared by Ms. Painter, Mr. Gregory, and Dr. Yancey. This is William Dent. His counterpart tonight is Andrea Lucero Romero. She is the daughter of Pedro Romero and Yaneth Romero. Andrea is a dancer and choir singer but is not currently active because she recently moved here from Ecuador. Her parents, oh, I heard an ooh out there in the audience. Her parents are the most influential because they're a good example in life for her and for her education. She is, has learned from them a lot of good values like honesty, respect, responsibility, perseverance, and commitment. Teachers say about Lucero that she shows courage while transferring to the middle school during the first quarter of the school year. She was presented with a challenging class assignment, and despite not being a native English speaker, but because of her intellect and courage, Lucero memorized her portion of the presentation in English and presented it in front of the entire eighth grade classroom. Lucero is the epitome of courage coming to a new school where she is unfamiliar with the language. She chose not to sit back and hope that it would work out, but she took charge. She's a hard worker, learning her basic English skills and then some. And Lucero exhibits courage daily when participating in class while learning these new language skills. She's persistent and works hard daily. From the beginning, she has been faced with these challenges of overcoming not, over the, not only the language barrier, but also a degree of culture shock. She has done so with a commendable level of courage. Those comments were shared by Mrs. Humbert, Mr. Ivelbliss, Mrs. Frau, and Mrs. McIntyre. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrea Lucero Romero. Okay, you folks may have a seat, please. That leads us, I believe, Dr. Sable and Mr. Scaramucci to the high school presentation for tonight. We have a few. You have a few. It's always a good thing. Um, we're going to start first by bringing up Mr. Rita um, and recognizing our two new Eagle Scouts. Um, it's up to you. I'd like to stand to the side. Uh, first, I want to thank Dr. Sable for this, uh, this moment. This is the third year that um, he's taken some time to recognize the, the school's Eagle Scouts. And um, I think it's kind of a big deal because only 4% of Scouts that start scouting actually achieve this rank. And I think you have three Eagle Scouts in this year's graduating class. So um, at this moment, I'd like to call the troop forward.
Yes. And I would like to take a real quick moment to uh, recognize the troops. Two new Eagle Scouts. The first one is Alex Chauvin. Alex, can you step forward, please? Project was um, working on the Kaseka stand in North Belvoir in a park. Alex, you want to take a moment to describe your project a little bit? Sure. Um, so at the North Belvoir Community Bank Park, um, I saw that the concession stand there needed some repairs, uh, and I, me and my my troop, uh, stepped to work on it. We fixed it up, painted it, um, gave them a new uh, a new cart, um, got them some new equipment, uh, just cleaned it up, made it a better place for them to use. Thank you, Alex. And our other Eagle Scout is Xander Coconar. Xander, please step forward. <laughs> Xander uh, worked at Cedar Creek Park and he worked on it with 20 bat boxes. There's maybe even more. So you can talk a little bit more about that project, please. Uh, yeah, so we always went camping as a troop at Cedar Creek Park. It's always been somewhere close to home and easy to go for us. And they always had a bat problem, like sometimes at the pavilions you would see a bat flying around or something like that. So in order to make the park a safer place, I decided to go with bat boxes. And I worked with all these guys and my teacher, Mr. Pappas, in high school to make these bat boxes and then hang them throughout the park to make it a safer place for everybody here. Thank you, Daniel. And to uh, lead us in our scout with the law, Mr. SPL, can you... Lead us, lead the troop and the audience in the scout with the law. All right, let's On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Scout law. Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, fair to keep, brave, clean, and reverent. Thanks. Thank you. Close the ranks behind. <laughs> Thank you. 
This student actually gave me a wonderful tour of the CTC when I was up there a couple of months ago. He's going to be an electrician, Nick Argento. Tighten them up. You good? Ready? Go. All right, three, two, one. I'll show you a picture. Of you. <laughs> now, our final one is something that's, that happened, and this student didn't tell me, and I got real angry at her. Um, this book right here is a published book um, called Turning the Corner. Um, the, the anthology part of it is Milestone. Um, Trinity Alexander got published in this book um, with her poem, The Lost King, which I'm going to have her come up here and read. Um, it's a pretty powerful, self-reflecting poem. Um, and I know that, you know, Trinity goes above and beyond at school, but I think this is going to be really for her stepping out of her comfort zone, because I don't think this is something that she really would like to do, but I'm going to make her do it anyway. So Trinity, come on up here. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity for this. I'm very excited. My poem is on page 286 of Turning the Corner. Sorry, 287. <laughs> Lost King. Bottled to her lips, they tremble as she says his name. We just left him in there to rot. She exclaimed, guilty fills her brain. He was a potent creature. He must have made the queen shake. So I listened to her agony as the alcohol pours her unfinished pain. But queen of the emperors, this I must say. I feel sorrow for leaving your king, yet he left before I could even contemplate. I almost have no clue of the storm that left an earthquake. I, I run as, I'm, it's such a cracked field. I run and search for him too, queen. But did this child know that she can't search for a dead king? I can't even see your reflection in these rivers and seas, yet you built up all these truths and left a dead tree. Even the sea that you've conceived can't grow from this ground. We hear distant cries of a man the devil made homebound. Maybe it's you I cry for every night in solitude. I wrap my arms around myself as though I can feel you. I heard a narrator once say you were my direct prote protector and passant. How is that you were the first person to show me the hostility of my absence? And when you look in the mirror, do you see us? Now in a cell, I bet you regret that day while you and your demons discuss. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have uh, high school announcements? We do. Emma I, I see your town crier in the back there, chomping at the bit. Yeah, she's ready to go. Okay. I can't wait. I didn't get to do it last month. I missed you guys. How's everyone doing? Feeling is mutual. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So every Wednesday from now until the end of the year, we wear orange in support of Nate. The Positivity is going to be sponsoring the egg hunt on April 6th. That's going to be giving out prizes. Prom tickets go on sale the 
April 12th through the 21st. All info is on the website, Sapphire, and Facebook. Dr. Sable has scheduled the senior meeting with students for April 11th. Hi, Q. <coughs> Team of Captain Dylan Holliday, Jake Wetzel, and Sarah Rushak recorded their playoff episode of KDKA's Hi, Q. This will air of Saturday, April 8th at 11 a.m. and again on Saturday, April 15th at 11.30 a.m. The Student Summit. Student leaders and participants attended the fourth annual Student Summit at Woodland Hills High School on Fe Friday, February 10th. Leaders prepared with other students from varying schools to present on, on their chosen topics. Participants attended three sessions that ranged from seven topics, allowing them to explore issues that were meaningful to them. Participants included Quinn Bradburn, Jalen Cheesebro, Farrah Reeder, Carter Stasha, myself, Logan Martin, and Dylan Holliday. Leaders planned and impl implemented presentations and activities on the following topics. Tessa Rodriguez, Megan Calloway, and Sienna Stieber, gun violence, <coughs> Emma Fitch and Lainey Pavlish, Women's Rights, Natalie Sokol, LGBTQ Rights, Luciana Lopez, Mental Health, Sienna Leonard, Climate Change, Adam LaCarte, Quentin Martin, and Alonzo Wade, Racial and Social Injustice. Student leaders will attend an event in April to commemorate their role in this year's Student Summit. Friends First. On February 14th, the Friends First hosted a Valentine's Dance in the high school gym for about 100 life skills students from around the area. There was a DJ, photo booth, plenty of snacks, face painting, and games. Our partners, art and gym classes, helped with decorating and teaching line dances. Local businesses helped with donations. Fun was had by all. The club is preparing for a rain rally, similar to the Fuller Plunge, to benefit Special Olympics. It will be held on April 4th in the main entrance circle to the high school. We are also beginning to plan for our prom. We want to give a great big shout out to the members of the club who hosted the dance and other similar events throughout the school year. They have gone above and beyond as friends to support our students. It means the world to our entire team. Yearbook. The yearbook staff is hard at work finishing up our fall and winter pages. The staff and sponsor are also hard at work prepping for club pictures, that was on March 7th, which will allow all clubs and educational groups at the high school to get a picture taken for the yearbook. On January 23rd, FBLA com competed in the Region 4 competition held at the Doubletree Hotel at the Meadowlands. Members competed against students from other schools in our area. Some of the event members competed in the public speaking, political science, business communications, and publication design. Three members, Viva Chris, Sienna Leonard, and Dylan Holliday, qualified in their rep respective events and attended the state competition held in Hershey, PA in April. Viva placed first in public speaking, Sienna placed third in political science, and Dylan placed first in business communications. MIC said, there will be a blood drive March 28th, positive message shirts Tuesdays, volunteered at Fells Church Methodist Bank, Food Bank March 16th. Mock prom disaster assembly will be held Friday, May 5th. The Archery Club. Members have been practicing twice a week since November. On March 24th, 13 members from the middle school and high school shot at the state archery tournament near Lancaster, PA. Student Council. On March 9th, members attended the Senator for a Day at Penn State Fayette, where they actively de debated proposed bills and tried to come up with compromises as they were members of Congress. National Honor Society. The National Honor Society is in the application process for new members. For those that qualify, induction will be April 12th. Outdoors Club. The Outdoors Club is starting to get volunteers to help in a tire cleanup at the Yawk River that is scheduled for May. They are also planning a canoe and kayak trip on the Yawk with an overnight stay in Cedar Creek. This will be done with Mr. Hammond's Outdoors Gym class. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe our uh, final invited guest for tonight is the Rotary Organization. Members of the Rotary, Rotary, are you here? Please come on up front. Introduce yourselves if you wouldn't mind. Hi, um, 
My name is Debbie Polia. Uh, I'm Debbie Heber. Tom Yoder. And can you step to the mic so the people in online land can hear you as well? <laughs> the president of our Rotary Club, uh, Brian Perilla, couldn't make it this evening. Um, but I'm here representing him. My name is Debbie Pooley. I'm the secretary of our Rotary Club. And the Belvert and Rotary has, um, we've had a long-standing, wonderful relationship with the Belvert and Area School District. And we're happy tonight to be able to expand on that uh, by presenting you with a check. Fancy this fan, fancy check, six thousand dollars. Wow. We asked for it to be used for the emotional support uh, throughout the district, and uh, this six thousand dollars represents profits that we made last year from our first ever regatta on the yacht, and it's something. We, we are hoping to make this donation an annual event and as well as the regatta on the yacht. And it, that program was uh, co-chaired by Tom and Debbie and they're the co-chairs for this year coming up. And they have some save the dates for you. So we hope that all of you will participate. Will come down and join us. It's a wonderful day long event. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Just add about the regatta. Um, we so much um, appreciated the school participating. Um, we had or the Interact Club come and help us with a lot of the, the tasks that happened throughout the day. Um, and it's just it it it, it has grown. Um, the amount of revenue we made was surprising, and um, we talked with you about where that money could make impact. And we are very pleased we're doing the same thing for this Fraser School District, which our club encompasses. So thank you, everyone, for what you do and for supporting us so we can support you. What is the date of the regatta? Oh, I'm so sorry. It is uh, Sunday, August 27th. And it is at Cedar Creek Park in the boat launch area. Um, all of We have a lot of water activities planned. Um, we have a paddle parade, ducks, lots and lots of ducks, <laughs> duck races, um, and there's a, it's we're, it'll be an enhanced event. Like we just keep piling on the activities, so you don't want to miss it. Everyone's invited. Thank you. Thank you. So if you have a kayak or canoe or just want to see some fun in the river that people have racing <laughs> and uh, decorating their boats, please join us. Please come down and see what goes on. <laughs> There's fun for everyone, as they say, uh, in a lot of venues. Uh, we had a great time last year. We know the sun will be shining. Uh, the youngest of uh, kids even have fun. We have events for them. So please come out. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and we meet every Thursday uh, night since uh, 1933. <laughs> so we've been serving the community for a long time. Awesome. Could we get a quick photo op with the three of you, Mrs. King, um, and any board member who would like to be up, up front with Rotary to accept the check? And I would ask Dr. Sable, can you snap a quick picture, please? That would be wonderful. Thank you. I'm in the Lions Club. Can't do that. Can't do it right now. Let my dad have that one. So as they're staging that, um, to get a quick photo op, um, as I'm looking out here in the audience, I happen to recognize somebody whom I used to work with, and I thought, holy moly, Mrs. Dudzinski is here just to see a former colleague speak to the whole community. And then it hit me that her daughter, Ava, is here with a colleague to probably announce some things for the middle school. Is that right? So, as much, Jen, as it is a pleasure to see you, and I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> I would invite the middle school folks to come up pretty please and give us a uh, snapshot of what the middle school has been up to. And just introduce yourself by name, please. Hello, my name is Haley Rodeball. I am on student council at the middle school. Here is what is going on. April 19th, the Belle Vernon Area Middle School is taking the 8th grade to, on the Gateway Clipper Lock and Dam Tour. 
The middle school girls volleyball team will be challenging the BVAMS staff in a volleyball assembly game in the afternoon of Friday, March 31st. Teachers are providing 14 different club opportunities during intervention. Archery, art, chess, digital breakout, CSI, coloring, friends first, speed and agility, maker space, newspaper, PE, in um, ping pong, scrapbooking, and STEM. Hi, I'm Ava Dzinski. I'm an eighth grader on the middle school student council. Over 350 st seventh grade students and their families filled the middle school on Thursday, March 23rd to attend the 11th annual Ethnic Heritage Festival. Attendees enjoyed seven student presentations, the best of the best, viewed hundreds of students' artwork, and feasted on delicious homemade foods. This year's festival was dedicated in memory of Ms. Roseanne Segan, who co-taught the project for over a decade with Mr. Waitman. The student council sold Sarah's candy as a fundraiser, and candy was delivered today to the students. That's it. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. I believe that concludes student recognition and other recognition for the night. Um, I would invite any of those invited guests, if you have other things that need your attention this evening, like homework and things of the sort, now would be a perfectly acceptable time for you to leave. By all means, if you want to stick around, feel free. And that's all that needs said to clear a room. As those final few folks are making their way to the, uh, to the door, I'll just mention some changes to the agenda in general. Um, informational item, uh, you'll see the addition of a monthly report. Um, Ms. Clark had the pleasure of being surrounded by 18 inches of snow in the Poconos at a conference. Um, therefore, her attention was on the roads and not necessarily a monthly report. Um, so in the interim, she has submitted that. Under contracts and agreements, you'll see three additional contracts that were submitted uh, between last Tuesday's meeting and this meeting. Uh, budget and financial, there were some additions um, that were submitted in the interim as well. Uh, the number of personnel items that are on there, um, also that hit the window of um, submitting information between last Tuesday's meeting and this evening. Therefore, the addition of those is they're enumerated on the uh, agenda. And Finally, uh, item L under facility usage, we got the uh, physical hard copy of that facility usage request to that now appears on the agenda as a change as well. Um, that brings us down to the approval of the agenda, Dr. Or Director Whiteco. Do um, I have a, an approval for this agenda? So moved, looking good. Second, Jerzak. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Agenda passes. Uh, comments from citizens relative to the agenda only. I'm sorry? Are we supposed to remove an item from the agenda? Um, that item can be called out for right. um, that works. separate action. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Uh, that right. will bring us to approval of minutes. Do I have an approval for work session minutes of February 21st, and regular minutes of February 27th. So moved. Second, name it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Under uh, category F, communications, um, you'll see attached monthly departmental reports as submitted by each of the departmental supervisors. Uh, item number two is the CWCTC Joint Operating Committee report. Um, Director Livingood, anything to report specific to that report? Um, we had uh, just a few, just a few little items. They are going to be having um, their National Honor Society recognition ceremony on May 1st um, at 12 p.m. start. That's an internal ceremony only. May 15th is their senior recognition ceremony. Um, they do two ceremonies that night. And they actually had an elementary um, successful evening my boys attended. Um, they did actually love it. They did um, 
electrical and power line and welding. They each did that. So I encourage um, our elementary students to take advantage of that next year. Um, there is pictures on Facebook of that. But yeah, it was a successful elementary evening night. So awesome. But yeah, I encourage the, our elementary students to check that out. So that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. WIU meeting minutes. Director Nemec, anything to add to the minutes? Uh, nothing additional to add. We'll be having a meeting tomorrow night there. Very good. Thank you. Um, you also see that there is uh, SAP data um, in a global sense um, submitted as well to the board for review. That brings us down to item G under communications, contracts, and agreements. We have seven items for action. Number one is the Mount Aloysius College Agreement for dual enrollment college and high school programs. Item number two is the approval of a Big 33 football combine to be held at the Weir in May. Uh, number three is to approve Gino Fagnelli as the end of course um, driving instructor uh, for skills. Item number four is the Seton Hill Agreement, similar to Mount Aloysius for dual enrollment college and high school. Item number five is an agreement for Westmoreland case management and supports. Item number six is the approval of an agreement between Belvern Area School District and Chestnut Ridge New Directions for 23-24. And item number seven is uh, the Westmoreland County SAP agreement for school year 23-24. We'll need a motion to approve those seven items. Do I have a motion to approve? I'm sorry, I just oh. have one question. The uh, SAP agreement, or is that approved for a specific number of hours or as needed, or, or what is so that? So that will be a continuation for a, um, a specific uh, dedicated liaison to uh, the school district. Um, we have a dedicated liaison now who's here five days a week to support the school. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? Seven. So moved. Nemec. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, budget financial. Ms. Clark, would you do the honors, please? Item number one, interim financial statements for February 2023. Item number two are the reconciliation reports and investments for February 2023. Item number three is the procurement card activity for February 2023. Item number four are bills presented for payment for February 2023. Item number five are interim bills for February 2023. Item number six is the athletic fund financial report for February 2023. Item number seven is the Student Activity Fund Reconciliations for February 2023. Item number eight is the NWEA Assessment Tool Package. Item number nine is the WIU 2023-2024 General Operating Budget. That will require a roll call vote, Director Wyko. Item number 10 is the purchase of buses. Item number 11 is a water heater purchase and installation. Item number 12 is a chartered bus rental. And item number 13, which is new to the agenda, is a refund in the amount of $68,227.92 to Pat Lander, our Ross Draver Township tax collector, who deposited it into our bank account by mistake. So you can do a, a uh, group vote for one through eight and 10 through 13, and then a separate roll call vote for nine. All, All right. right, any questions on any of the items one through 13? The I have a question on item 13. Is, at least from what I understand, it appears that the township's having a lot of issues with the tax collector and rush driver. And I'm, it appears to now be affecting the school district in terms of man hours, time and financially, I, I guess. And the question is, is there anything we could do to put pressure on the township to sort out this issue and mitigate So what I, what I could offer is that um, Ms. Clark and myself, um, Ms. Schrempf met with um, Ross Traver Township and we discussed some inconsistencies that we had experienced um, as well as they. And um, suffice it to say, we're singing from the same sheet of music and we're in agreement there's, there's reason for concern. Sure. So we're working alongside uh, Ross Traver Township cooperatively to try and sort those inconsistencies out. Got it. 
And to add to that, the county is also experiencing the same issues. Got it. So we're doing what we can, what we have the ability to do. Correct. We are. Address it. Thank you. You're welcome. Other items for discussion? Yeah, number 12, I had discussed the charter bus. And I'm, <laughs> our team was invited by um, Representative the Vanza to go to the state capital and I don't know do you know what they're gonna you don't know what they're gonna do down there I don't know the specific itinerary but haven't seen them in the past they get invited out to the capital they go to the rotunda potentially a proclamation is read they might be on a tour uh, of the capitol building itself and I see the funds are coming from the athletic fund correct so what does that mean uh, director that comes from the athletic fund which is comprised of ticket sales and, and the like, donations. Right. You're okay with that? I am fine with that. Okay. Are you not okay with that? I was <laughs> thinking that money could be better, better spent someplace else. I, I didn't see, you know, we had a parade and other but things that we did. That What's was, that? That was thrown by the <coughs> And we've had uh, banquets and, you know, Celebrations. I, I, I just thought it was a, to, to make a statement. It's an honor. Okay. To make, honored. but to make a, I just wanted to know what they were going to do. You know what I mean? It's an educational sure. tour too. All right. Would you prefer to have that item? No, I'm going to, I'm going to vote yes, but I just wanted to make a, a statement. So again, we can entertain uh, approval on items one through eight and 10 through 13 in one motion. All right. So we're going to go one through Eight mm -hmm. and ten through thirteen. And ten through thirteen. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second, Second. Callaway Rodriguez. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. And now we're going to do a roll, roll call, call vote. vote. On number nine. Director Callaway Rodriguez. <clears throat> Director Callaway Rodriguez. Yes. Director Gross. Yes. Director Habel? Yes. Director Harhai? Yes. Director Jerzak? Yes. Director Nemec? Yes. Director Waco? Yes. Director Quinn? Yes. Director Livingood? Yes. Nine yeses. Motion carries. Thank you. We're good. That brings us down to regular policies on a first read basis. Uh, items 1 through 12 are all related to home education programs. Um, that's homeschooling. Uh, those are the homeschooling um, regulations and policy, as well as administrative regulations, such things as guardian letters, curricular materials, extracurricular participation, et cetera. Again, that's on a first read basis. Uh, item number 13, uh, eligibility of non-resident students. Um, what that states is that the district, if approved, the district would be able to accept students on a tuition basis. There's also some language that I'm sure we'll have some continued discussion on as far as employees uh, being able to bring their children um, to the district. Um, if there needs to be more discussion on that, certainly we may have that. Uh, item 14 is policy for video surveillance and allowing access in times of emergency to Ross Traver Township Police. And item number 15, also on a first read basis, is transportation with video and audio recording, uh, also on a first read. Are there any questions or further discussion on any of those policies? Yes, I thought we were pulling um, 13 to discuss further. You mean the last? This Policy one? 202? Yep. Yes. So we could either remove that from consideration, we can talk about the terms and conditions that were in there if that's the point of disagreement, um, or we could let it go to a second read and vote to see if it's either, if it either passes or fails. So there, there are the options that are Director Harhai. Are the reimbursement rates for employees still 100%? Uh, that can be of discussion. Um, I provided some survey information for you, and sure. those terms can be, right. yeah, they can be adjusted so it's more palatable for the board. Having given it more thought, I think, I don't think it's appropriate to provide a benefit to employees who choose to not live within, within our school district in one of our five municipalities and pay taxes here. I'd truthfully rather give a bonus to employees that do live here. 
in one of our five municipalities. So I'll be planning to vote no on this policy. I think we need to pull it and have further discussion, just for the simple fact that we do have some good employees in this district. Not all of them who work here have their children here. They're not going to bring their kids here. I know, you know, they're already uh, and rooted. But here, here's district. the thing. Here's the thing that I want to see. That where the say in West Mifflin, if your kids, you need daycare, or you're going to school, and you don't have time to you know, the bus, they send them to a, a daycare and the bus picks them up there. You, you with me? Right. So I, I don't like, if you live in a district, you should send your kids to that district. That's, that's, so I'll be voting no on that. Okay. I just don't think it's appropriate to bring these kids to school. I don't see the advantage of it. If you live in York and you're a teacher, your kids should go there. You know what I mean? I, I just think it's natural to go with where your peers. Let our taxpayers foot the bill for employees who choose to not. Right. And that can know. vary. Say if you have 20 kids there one year. There are schools. There are districts that actually work it out with the other district. For the yeah, but I, I think the kid should go where he lives. Well, sometimes. Where his friends are. You're, you're disrupting the kid by bringing him here. Here's what to do: move here if you want to. If you want to send your kids Some to Belvern, don't have that luxury to just yes, they do. Move here. It needs to they can. If you so, want to be in a Peters Township, I, I everybody wants to be in Peters Township. Township. Okay, you got all these housing plans, all this urban sprawl. Yeah, so People move there. I don't want to. Director Wyko and Director Jerzak, let's pull this so we can have further discussion. Yeah, I'm going to vote. I, I can't see my mind being so, swayed. So, are we going to vote on the policy? So, what you can do, you can either vote no, or you can just have a motion to table 13 for further discussion. Are we voting on these for a second? But it's a second. No, this, no. Is, this is a first read basis, first so readings. you can make a motion so, to table that right. item. Yeah. So we can have further discussion. But again, it's it's a first reading. So right. strictly speaking, if you voted yes on Six all of these, yes. they're not adopted policies yet. It would but still have to go through a second reading. Okay. That's right. So if you want if you want to take that one out just because you want to have more discussion or workshop it or whatever you want to do, then I think the appropriate thing would be to approve all the policies with the exception of 13 and just move to table 13. Has any other board member had any further thought? I think it gives us some, and oh, some of the, uh, okay. you want to table it? I'd like to pull right. it for further discussion. Further yeah. discussion. Okay. I, so, I, I'm not okay. seeing it. So, so we'll need a I'll, motion. I'll make a motion to remove item 13 from the agenda. Correct. I will second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. And I should just say, um, and Dr. Williams pointed this out to me, you don't need to actually approve the other ones, you're just acknowledging the first reading. So. You don't need to take any further action in this section. That leads us to regular adoption, and these four are up for adoption this evening. Uh, number one is policy 217 on graduation. Item number two is the administrative regulation on the pathways to graduation. That's updated language with um, changes to the um, from PDE on how to attain um, graduation status. Item number three is enhanced language for dress and grooming. And item number four is also enhanced language for uh, suspension and expulsion. We would need a motion for those. Do you have a motion to approve those four? So move, living good. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Under personnel, um, we will want to take action on item one, resignations and retirements. Uh, Greg Stieber. Um, Motion to accept his resignation as head middle school football coach. And John Baylog, motion to accept the retirement of John Baylog as middle school custodian. Item number two, under substitute hires. Uh, and I believe this item, Director Har High, you would like to discuss further separately from the, the rest? Correct. Um, two, I'll item read, one. Okay, I'll, I'll read through them and we'll make that notation. Item two is substitute hires mm -hmm. um, to hire those three individuals. Uh, Director Harhai's request is to um, isolate item two, substitute hires, specifically item one, for a separate vote. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Item number three under regular hires um, to approve Dave Chabin as a van driver. Um, 
Item four is supplemental positions. Greg Boggs for a middle school football head coach. Uh, two volunteers, Matt Rechichar and Mark Corella uh, for approval for middle school baseball. Um, one employee under FMLA um, for approval. And item number seven under unpaid leaves, uh, nine individuals for unpaid leaves. Um, so if we may, and if Director Whiteco, you're in agreement, can we first pull item two, substitute hires, uh, number one, for a separate um, motion and discussion? Yes. I'm good with that. Do you want to do it um, so do we? now? Are, yep. are we able to just segregate it, Ta table it? You want to? Yeah. So what you could do is you can approve now in one motion, like like your others, um, K one through seven, seven, excepting two one, yes. paragraph two section one, and then when when we consider paragraph two section one separately, if someone wants to make a motion to table that, while it's on the table, you can certainly do that. Does that make sense? Yes, thank yeah. you. Sure. So the first is a motion to approve everything except for two. All right. We're going to have a motion to approve everything except item two, part A. Part one. Part one. Part one, part one you want to call it? That's <laughs> what it says. So, so so figure two, one. two A and two dot two one. one. Okay. <laughs> two dot one. Do I have a motion to approve all the other items? Motion, Callaway Rodriguez. Second, Nemec. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Okay, next. We need a motion for. Um, we need a motion to approve. 2.1. 2.1. I would like to make a motion to table it. Well, so first we should put it on the table. Okay. So we, sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I know because okay. it's confusing. I make a motion that we. Discuss? Discuss it. That we approve Peyton. Mendick for employment as a substitute PCA retroactive to 313 at a pay rate of $12 an hour pending receipt of clearances. Is there a second? That gets it on the table. So that Do I have a second to approve, okay. discuss? Okay. I, I would like to table it for further discussion. We, yeah. we, we need a second at first. We need a second for the I motion. I question before second. motion or not. For his motion. Uh, right. Yeah, no. Well, no, I mean, for it to be something. You can give you a second. You want a second? There has to be a motion and a second. You can want a second, his? You need a motion, a second, and this. Guy. Yes. Correct. Right. We have a second. I second it. I Director Jerzak. I can move forward. Now discussion. Well, do we need to have a motion to approve that discussion or no? No, because no. okay. it's already been seconded. <laughs> right. So the discussion right. is the natural. Okay. okay. <laughs> and if somebody wants to make a motion to table it, now is the appropriate time to do that. I would like to make a motion to table it for further discussion after. I'd like to make a motion to remove it entirely. I'll second the motion to remove it entirely. Let's take a vote. Let's take a roll call vote either way. How about to that? remove it. Is this to remove This is a vote. The motion to remove it. Well, remove. is it to or remove it from the agenda or just to, <laughs> to, to remove reject the position? It. Reject it. Yeah. I mean, either way, the effect like is the same. Yeah. So it's not going to come back. Okay. Okay, this is a motion to reject the item. Motion to remove it and Reject the administration it. to go back to the contract agencies to fill the positions. Okay, Director Callaway Rodriguez, this is a motion to reject, remove, yes. Director Gross? Yes. Director Habel? No. Director Harhai? Yes. Director Jerzak? Yes. Director Nemec? Yes. Director Waiko? Yes. Director Quinn? Yes. Director Livingood. Yes. Okay, eight yeses, one no. All right. Motion passes to reject. Okay. Under uh, category L, facility usage requests, uh, we're looking for the approval of um, multiple facility usage requests. Uh, there are three under tier one. There is one under a tier three submission. And there are 30 under tier five for approval. We need a motion for those three items, please. Do I have a motion? I have a second? A second, Nemec. All right. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Facilities are approved. That brings us to committee reports. Uh, Buildings and Grounds Committee, Director Whiteco. Uh, yes, I believe that the ceiling towel has been replaced in the band room. They have, all of them. Okay. Yes. So I guess Impressive. the ductwork needed insulated. And that was the holdup, is the insulation of the ductwork yes. so it didn't condensate on thank further. You. Thank you to Jason and Dana Chester, who, who was actually the person up on the ladder wrapping the, the insulation. Ductwork, yes. Thank you. Um, that's my report. <laughs> to Athletics and Activities, Director Jerzak. I don't really have much this evening. I know, and, and just. In case anybody doesn't know, all of the reports for the committees are online, so you can read them. And I don't feel we need to necessarily regurgitate them, all the um, which documents. is why I'd love to have the the depart department heads here for that, so we can ask questions if we have them. Um, but I just wanted to make a few mentions. Um, thank you to Mr. Humbert, who is really doing a lot to make the high school that one hallway where the art annex is um, and also his office um, for sports he's he's purchasing some extra display cases and he's gifting not gifting or you know allowing the band to use to he's letting mr fesick um, display his art in one i believe also so that that area of the building is going to look really mm -hmm. nice um, as, as it should um, so and he's also curating some vintage pieces from years past. So if you get a chance to go up there and look at it, I highly recommend it. Also, I just wanted to say, um, I don't know if any of you had a chance to go see Anastasia. I know some of you have. If you missed out, you know, that's, that's a shame because it's Mr. Roselle's last year. I know some of the other people that he worked with, it's, they're also kind of bowing out. Um, so thank you to Michael Roselle for all of his years and everything that he's put into these productions and all of his staff. Um, so. <laughs> we will be missed. Um, but I know that he is leaving it in capable hands. Um, so, and those people have some great ideas moving forward. So I'm, I'm eager to see what they're going to come up with for next year. Um, also, you know, I just wanted to mention I, this kind of goes into Director Living Goods territory, but a few weeks back there were senior projects. Um, and I know Director Nemec and Director Harhai and I were able to sit in on um, the PLTW the robots. Um, and it was really fascinating. And our kids are doing some great things. Actually, um, in one of the presentations was one of our Eagle Scouts, mm -hmm. um, which is nice to see. It's diversifying his interests. So. I don't really think I have anything else. Spring sports are underway. We have a, a committee meeting for the athletics on Thursday. So I know that we'll be talking about a lot of different things moving forward for next year. So um, we'll have that for you next month. Very good. Thanks. Curriculum Technology and Arts Committee, Director Livingood. Yes, um, we will have a curriculum meeting on May 10th at 5.30. Um, there is going to be some PSSA testing in the elementaries coming up um, in April, I believe April 25th for grades three through six for ELA and April 26th um, ELA Wednesday, April 25th and 26th. And apparently on April 28th, there is a talent show in the high school. So exciting. I think that would be great to see. So. April 28th, Friday. Friday. It's a Friday. Friday. So I think that will be exciting to see as well. So, and um, I know, but thank you. I'll do some comments at the end, but okay. that's all I have. But thank you. Sure. Uh, Personnel and Finance Committee, Director Habel. We, as always, are hiring. Um, if you're interested in a job, uh, contact Mallory Marish, and she will get you the information you needed to apply. Uh, Thank you. Just wanted to say thank you to all the volunteers, volunteer baseball coaches. Every there's a tremendous amount of support in our community that people volunteer and spend time 
helping the community, whether it's setting up for a band banquet, setting up for cast parties, just tremendous support from all the volunteers in our community. Just want to say thank you to all of them. You know, you might not be an employee of the district, but you're definitely an integral part of the district. So thank you very much for all you do to support us. And uh, thank you, Ross Draper Township, for the interest that we earned on the $68,000 for about a week or so. We actually made money off of them for their mistakes, so it didn't cost us anything. Thank you. Thank you, Director Hable. Um, Did we get any interest, Crystal? Wake up? <laughs> no. It's not, it's not an interest-bearing job. It's not an interest-bearing account? Mm. Cafeteria and Transportation Committee, oh, Director Calloway Rodriguez. <laughs> yes, um, I will start with um, transportation. Um, items that were board approved tonight um, was approval to buy the five new buses at a cost of $105,291. The total cost was $526,450. Um, also, the van we purchased in Ohio um, did not have, a, obviously, inspection sticker from Pennsylvania. So our um, registration and our license plate information came in, and we had 30 days to receive that, and we did it immediately. Um, Dave also had a company who services our garage doors come out. Uh, the doors needed collaborated. So he had that done and also uh, added two remote controls that were updated. Dave also had held a regular meeting the first week of March with his employees. Um, uh, and Dave also has four people lined up for the bus and van washing this summer. Dave uh, will have them work four days a week instead of five, assign them work each week. Um, he is also working on assigning drivers uh, to summer runs that will be available as these schedules are starting to come out. He has uh, the uh, ESL program for our kids here at BVA, and most of the out of the district schools have summer classes as well. And the state police have contacted Dave and scheduled the yearly bus inspections. They will be here on June 26th, 27th, and 28th. That's transportation. And sure, I have one question. Do we yes. have a timeline or do we have any information on when the buses will be here? I know our transportation meeting Person. he was saying a couple, it'll take a couple weeks, weeks once it gets to the garage in um, with written house. Smock. Smock. Yes, okay. thank okay. you. To put the stickers and lettering and all that on there. Gotcha. Um, we had a little hold up with the pricing. We were quoted one and yeah. so now it's going through so everything's fine and I think would it be about a couple it should be relatively soon. Yeah, soon. Yeah. We're not sure if they'll be way. placed into service this school year or if it'll wait till next, but we should know more in the next couple of weeks. Okay, thanks. The old buses, what happens? We, we traded them? We did trade them, yes. and we got credit for trading them. Okay. A few thousand apiece, I think. Yeah. I bet you they smell brand new. Like brand we new received $1,200 in trade value for, the, for our buses. To okay, be traded. thanks. Yep. Brand new car smell. Thanks to our fiscal responsibility, we were able to afford them cash. That's right. Yes. So I was curious, how much do we save doing that? Any idea? Or I'm sure you looked at that. Um, I could get back to you on that. I, I don't have a, an amount off the top of my head, but the interest rates have been hiked at least eight times since we right. were originally quoted. Um, so on a loan for $530,000, it is substantial. So it might be a good yeah. savings. Mm -hmm. Good job. Thanks. Okay, any more questions for transportation? All right, cafeteria. There were no items on the uh, agenda this month. However, uh, Dave has done several um, maintenance repairs. Uh, he had a heating element was replaced in the food warmer at RES, thermostat for oven at middle school. Um, also, his seal was replaced on a dishwasher. The health inspector was out at Marion for the second required visit. 
and we passed. The other three school cafeterias will have their second inspections done soon. Um, they do not know when they are coming yet. And Dave ordered iPads for each cafeteria, and this was one of the discussions that we had um, in our committee meeting. Um, there's three iPads for each cafeteria, so he purchased a total of 12. And these iPads that they use are when they ring the children up. And what was happening was they were shutting off in the middle. Then the um, employee would have to go and do everything in key and everything manually, hold up the line, and it was just a huge inconvenience. Um, <clears throat> so he has those ordered. Dave has also placed a request for government produce for the 23-24 school year. The deadline was March 31st. Dave already has his in. And during our committee meeting, um, we talked about negative account balances um, in the cafeteria. And we have 13 accounts that owe over $200. So. Dave's trying to come up with some ideas with that. He is going to hand out the uh, free and reduced um, applications, you know, so we can try to clear some of that up. And um, the important dates coming up is Dave has training sessions scheduled for April 18th at the Allegheny IU at the waterfront, and he will also continue to train through the summer. So I would like to end my report by thanking all of our employees um, that go above and beyond. It is greatly appreciated. And I also like to thank Dave since I work hand in hand with Dave with our committee meeting. Um, I Dave just does a phenomenal job and it shows. So thank you Dave and crew. Thank you. That leads us to comments from the board and or administration. Thank you. Ron? Yep, I have one comment. Um, I'd like to report back on the first meeting of the Middle School Restructuring Evaluation Committee. Stacy, Mr. Habel, and I had the opportunity to be the board representatives on the committee, and there was a kickoff meeting uh, midweek last week. And um, as you all know, I've challenged the administration to show the data, show the facts, show the technical justification for this evaluation. And I will share that in the meeting, I was somewhat surprised because what was presented, what I felt was presented to the committee was a lot of, you know, this is what we want to go off and do. What are the logistics of making it happen? You know, how do we want to send sixth grade to the middle school? And that's something I'm concerned about given that Half of this building has been plowed to the ground and additions have been added on to both Marion Elementary and Ross Draver Elementary to accommodate sixth grade about 10 years ago. Additionally, we've had declining enrollment in the school district since 1976. I'm very concerned about this evaluation. I felt that it was somewhat slanted towards how to make it happen. And I'm again challenging the board and the administration to provide a solid technical justification for the evaluation. You know, take one step higher level before we figure out how to make it happen, how to make bell schedules happen, how to make the classrooms work. Think, is this the right thing we should be doing? Like that's a lot of time. A lot of time involved. Correct. And mine. Yes. Just thank you all. I, I'd invite Mr. Habel and Mrs. Livingood to share your perspective as well. Any other comments from the board or administration? I have one. Sure. Um, I just I just wanted to make mention that I noticed that we have our ESP one, a, a, a large group of, of our, our employees here, and I know that we need to have a meeting, and I just wanted to mention that in front of Mr. Habel to see if we could, you know, maybe get on the books a meeting with our personnel committee and our union head or president, just to have better communication. As I told them, and as I said at the executive session, that I would say that they requested a meeting, I said that they requested a meeting. So they asked me to tell the board that they yeah, would like a John, meeting, and I did that. 
John can set up a time and a day that works well for all, you know, all involved. Right. So he'll get back to us with a date. Sure. Um, I would like to give a shout out to um, the nurses, custodians, teachers, and um, even the cafeteria workers. There's been um, some sickness that's been spreading around, the stomach bug, for lack of a better word. Um, you guys really take care of our kiddos over there at the schools, and we're grateful. We really are. Um, I had two sick kiddos myself, and I, I can tell you that, you know, you guys really take care of them when, we, when we're not able to until we can get there. And we're grateful. Actually, I had a, a, one of my boys was on the mend. I won't say which one. Um, on Friday, it was BBA school pizza day. And um, he wanted me to place a takeout order for BBA school pizza and a side of breadsticks because the breadsticks are so pillowy soft. So I says, I'm really, I really don't think that's the best thing for your, you know, sore little belly just yet. But, um, but yeah, that's a shout out to um, our cafeteria and our, like I said, the nurses, the custodians who have to clean up after our sick little kiddos. I don't think that we, you know, we as parents, you know, realize that whenever there are a significant amount of kiddos in that school, you know, we may only have one or two kiddos at home, but they have sometimes... 15, 16 kids that they're taking care of, you know, situations. That's a lot. That really is a lot. So again, I give them all the credit in the world because that's a lot of messes to clean up. So again, thank you for your dedication to your jobs. So just wanted to say thank you. Hey, Rob, I just wanted to go back to what you had said. Yes. And, I mean, I'm on the committee. Unfortunately, I couldn't make them. I'm meeting. sorry. Jean. That's okay. No, I couldn't make it last week, so I wasn't there. I am going to the visits that we have scheduled for this week. But it was my understanding that that's going to be part of the process. Is, was, yeah. We hadn't made the decision to do that, but we're going to be looking at numbers, logistics, uh, what can we do, what can't we do, what do we need to do. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my understanding that that's supposed to be our, our first step. And Correct. then yeah, we'll I, go, go what from are there. the preliminary numbers for kindergarten? We had 92 numbers from our so many years, years old 74 old yeah. at MES. 74 at MES? 92 at MES and 74 at MES. I did not talk to Lillian today, so. So we have and 166 <laughs> right now. What did we? What do we currently have in our kindergarten census? Uh, about 180. Do you 180. have an exact number, Mrs. King? I believe we're actually at 179. I'm looking in the existing Still class. Lower. We have 99 at RES and we have um, 80. So 179. 179, okay. 99 and 80 are our numbers. Another thing to issue, too, with the middle school is we used a lot of the space. You know, it used to be 7th, 8th, and 9th. Yep. We used a lot of the space to evaporate, you know what I mean, for other things and chopped it up, right? Correct. So. Especially with the, the Univent project right. of the last year. Right. And then we had to, now we got to re, kind of reinvent the wheel on that. But I'll let you, I'll let you guys handle that. Yeah, I, I think our goal is to best educate sixth, seventh, and eighth, well, best educate all of our children in the district. And if that is sixth, seventh, and eighth being in one building, if that's in the best interest of those children and it gives them the best educational opportunity, that's what we'll do. If it's to, for them to remain K through six, seven, eight, and then nine through 12 in three separate buildings, then we'll do that. Our goal is to do what's in the best interest of the children to, so they receive the best education they can receive. That's our goal. There, sh there shouldn't be anybody that is obstructing any one situation. We just need to figure out where these children need to be that they can receive the best instruction because if you have so many children in one building, it's that's not a good thing either because I also encourage you to take a tour of RES. It is way too full. I encourage that, Rob. I, that's an opinion. But if, if you have a crowded building and you make that building less crowded and you make another building more crowded, you still have a crowded building. You're reallocating crowd. Correct. And there were more students in Ross Draper Elementary when I went there 
15 years ago. But it's something that we With need to- less grace. Yeah. We need to spend our time, due diligence, right. making sure we're making the proper best decision for our students, no matter what that outcome is. We want solid, hard facts, spreadsheets, Correct. whatever. This is what we predict in the future. Correct. We want to see it all laid out, plain yep. as day. That's all I'm asking for right. here. Right. That's the expectation that was set at that meeting, and yep. I plan as you to make sure that happens. Will you take a tour with us at Ross Draver as well? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Additional comments or comments from citizens? This point. Um, yes, we have comments from citizens. Do we have any? We know your name, Marla McCloskey. <laughs> Marla McCloskey, and I am a resident of Ross Draper Township. A couple of things. Number one, thank you for tonight. Um, I wasn't going to get up and say anything, but this topic that you just talked about um, kind of hits home because I had five kids go through this school district, and my Sarah, who happens to be here tonight, was in the sixth grade class that got moved down to the elementary. There was no pre-planning. It was all, nobody knew what to do with them. They had a horrible year. Please take the time to look at what you're doing, both sides, elementary and the middle school, and make a good educated choice of what you do. Don't ruin all these kids year just because you're shoving them somewhere that makes sense on a quick decision. It, it really does affect them long term. So um, please take your time and look into all of that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Down to adjournment. Abbott, Washington Township. I know you pulled 202 from uh, the agenda. Uh, however, as Director Hardhigh said about making decisions, educated decisions, take your data and make good data-driven decisions. Why? Because my son is in seventh grade, okay? And I just did a community risk reduction um, report on Ross Raver Township for 2020 for the fire department and the National Fire Protection Association. And if you, meaning the district, not you individually, allow non-residents to come in, okay? Say you get 15 students at a hundred or $15,000 or 10 students at $15,000. That's $150,000. Could that up the numbers of the seventh grade per se? And then take away from my child that I'm a taxpayer that I have never moved out of this school district in the last 45 years. Okay? You're having teachers that possibly could, you know, not live in this district. And they're paid a healthy penny. That's no lie. But they're, they could be taken away from my child. When you have all of these new homes being put up where they are three and four thousand dollar homes where they're living multi-generations that those students are going to be coming into our districts another thing to think of is before I did accounting I did shot accounting which is what Miss Russell does so if you have let's say a director Harha, you have um, an employee that has three students that live in Sweetley Township that should go to York. You are taking $45,000 away from this York School District with their ADMs, an average daily membership, and letting them go to school here free. You're really putting the screws to other school districts. 
That's all I have to say. Just make good data-driven decisions. If you need to, I'm more than welcome and willing to show you what I worked on. It took me many months to do. And to work with all your five municipalities, look at your per capita, see inside what you have in your districts that you are paying taxes to before you allow non-residents, regardless if they're free or not, coming in to take away from people that genuinely pay taxes here. Thank you. Thank you, Georgette. And I also have a comment, too, on that. Yes. Um, you have, uh, that can create just many different avenues of problems. Correct. You know, number one, on the students. Correct. Okay. But then you, you got to look at, too, um, that can also be more financial stress on the district. Correct. We may have to hire more teachers. Correct. And if you're busting at the seams as it is, we might have to move. Okay. To so you figure a teacher salary, an additional teacher salary, Correct. onto that. How much are you actually saving, or what are you actually gaining by that? We wouldn't be saving. Correct. You'd actually be paying out of pocket, which would go in the rears in budget. Yes. So that theoretically, a good idea. I'm not saying it's not a good idea. I'm just saying, period, that this, it could go backwards. Right. I've always been against tuition-based students. And that was when I did Shot Accounting, and I did it for many years. I was president of the A Kappa Association for the state of Pennsylvania. I mean, if employees bring their students, that's one thing. But when you accept tuition-based students, you're opening a world of a can of worms up. Yeah, I agree. I'm not. I'm not a fan. You know, you. you and my my thing is, you live in Dawson, and you're a teacher here, and then you bring your kids here. You know, you want the cheap taxes down in Dawson, PA. But yeah, you want right. Well, yeah, but I, there have been teachers in the past that got around bringing their students here. I will tell you that that was back 25 years ago when I right. first started. Right. But. Honestly, you're, then you would be cheating Fraser School District Correct. out of their ADMs for that student. Right. I agree. I just think because your peers, you know, you're, you're, I'm not, I'm not for it. Your, your friends, your, your peers, they're in that district, and then you're going to bring them down to Bell Vernon. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not, I'm not for it. I mean, my child, because I've worked on this side of the district, they gave me the option when he began kindergarten to right. bring him here. No, he needs to be in Marion on Marion's side where he's familiar with his, his people. surroundings. Yes, yeah, right, Absolutely. exactly. I agree. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Georgette. Thank you. Thanks, Georgette. All right, with that being said, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. You switch pens on me. <laughs>